So what we are trying to do is develop a timeline for probiotic supplementation, starting from the hatching egg up until the grow out bird, right? So we talk about salmonella control and salmonella we know is everywhere and anywhere. So yeah. it can get into the production system at any on all points. So we wanted to see how we can come up with a probiotic based hurdle approach. Hello and welcome to another episode of Poultry Nutrition Black Belt. I'm your host, Pratima Adhikari from Mississippi State University. Um, thank you for joining in today's episode. Um, in this episode, we always talk about our latest and greatest research um, related to the poultry, nutrition, and around. So today in our program, we have a guest, Dr. Marianne Amalaraju from University of Connecticut. She is an associate professor in Department of at Department of Animal Science, and she has been doing great things in that department. Dr. Amala Raju, Marianne, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me, Pratima. It's my pleasure always, and it's always nice to see you. Um, it's always nice to chat about the research. Um, so that's awesome. So I could talk with you today. Um, in our previous episode of the same nutrition black belt, you talked about um, probiotics in a broiler's muscle growth. So here we're kind of continuing the similar approach in muscle type birds or maybe layers if we need. And we're going to go deep down, deep dive down into some of the cool things, research that your lab has found out. OK, so today mm -hmm. we're going to focus mostly on the salmonella control in a broiler production. Um, can you give some highlights of your lab? Sure. Uh... So the goal, so both the one, uh, the previous episode where we talked about improving performance and particularly looking at muscle growth and what we are going to discuss today is salmonella control. Both of the projects or both of the approaches, uh, they were triggered by response from stakeholders, right? Poultry farmers. So with help from extension, uh, we actually did a survey with poultry farmers to see what's going on, what they need, where there might be room for uh, improvement, at the same time, making it cost effective. Right, that's very important. Exactly. So, and then also the feasibility or acceptability of a proposed approach for farmers to use. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, so you may find something that's so very great, but at the end of the day, if it's not feasible or applicable, then it doesn't work. So that's where the, the project as whole started. Um, so what we are trying to do is develop a timeline for probiotic supplementation, starting from the hatching egg up until the grow out bird, right? So we talk about salmonella control and salmonella we know is everywhere and anywhere. So yeah. it can get into the production system at any on all points. So we wanted to see how we can come up with a probiotic based hurdle approach right? control salmonella. And the first part was the podcast with Kelly, where we had talked about using a similar approach, but looking at the performance aspect of it. So we, we wanted to provide the producers um, a comprehensive approach, right? So if they use one system in their production, that will improve performance and also help control salmonella. Right. In this, so again, like I said, we start with the hatching eggs. Uh, we go through a shipping simulation, you know, once the hatchlings, and then we grow them out and we track salmonella throughout the production pipeline. Oh, that sounds very cool. And I'm very interested, as you're mentioning, a shipping simulation. Can you can we talk about it? What do you can you share some things? Sure. I know that sounds fancy. Uh, very <laughs> simply. Um, you know, ideally, I would have liked to put the chicks in the transport boxes and drive them around, but that is not possible given a lot of restrictions um, yeah. because they'll be infected birds. So what, um, <laughs> yes. So what we did is we actually did, once the birds hatched, we actually put them in shipping boxes. Okay. But we kept them in a room and maintained them uh, under set temperature and humidity conditions that, you know, Average 
transport condition yeah. and gotcha. we kept them for around 24 hours yeah yeah right so that is what we call as transportation yeah uh, simulation yeah. to see if again at that point in time when they're really naive right how can we help support the birds mm -hmm. right and also see if there's a way we can reduce uh, salmonella transfer Okay, thank you for sharing because, you know, it depends, right? I mean, usually when we do research or even any producers get their chicks from, it depends on the mm -hmm. hatchery, how far it is. It may be a few hours to a few minutes, right? Yeah. Um, or yeah. it may be inside the same farm if it's a bigger complex, right? Yeah. So I think just giving us some kind of simulation, I think that sounds really cool. Um, Marianne, can you talk about, so when you apply these probiotics in these eggs, mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit on the method side? Um, how do you apply? The first goal for us when we develop the methodology is so that it's non-invasive. Okay. And you don't need any technical expertise, right? Or you don't need any fancy equipment to apply the probiotic. So all we did was spray the hatching eggs with different candidate strains, and then we set them in the incubator. Okay. That's So it's a non-invasive spray method. You spray them before you actually put the eggs in the incubator. Oh, I see. Okay, cool. Yes, 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 yes. And then what about this hatching egg sanitation side of things, right? Do you want to talk about? So what we did is, so we inoculated the eggs, right? And then we uh, sprayed them with the probiotics. And then we sampled them to see what's happening to the hatching eggs, how much salmonella survives, Right, and we looked at external shell counts. We looked at how many how many salmon actually get into the egg. Mm -hmm. So we also did sampling. Yes, we did the shell, we did the inner shell membrane, and we did the egg contents to see how much salmon actually gets into. Because, well, the hypothesis is whatever gets into eventually gets transmitted to the developing embryo and the hatchling. Right, right, right? yes. So yeah, so that is what we kind of called as hatching egg sanitation. Right, 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 and. Uh, so when we delivered the probiotics, we saw significant reduction, uh, not only on the surface, but it significantly reduced salmonella movement into the egg. Okay. Yes, because when we use a lot of these disinfectants, a lot of them do surface decontamination. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, but they cannot get to the salmonella that's inside the egg, right? But in this case, we saw that the probiotics also translocated, yeah. right? Salmonella yeah. bacteria, probiotics are bacteria, so they get into the egg. And then they were able to reduce salmonella in the egg. At Barnes, we're more than just another feed additive company. We are driven by science, innovation, and an understanding of the challenges you face in the ever-changing world of animal agriculture. We are your trusted partner for new-to-market natural alternative to choline chloride, Colon Plus FC, as well as enzymes, prebiotics, probiotics, macro minerals. To learn more about our product offering, visit barnes-ne.com forward slash animal nutrition. Together, there's always a better solution. Oh, that is so, um, that, that should be a very good finding from your research because, yeah, we kind of know these probiotics are uh, bacteria, healthy or good bacteria. They have a similar way of transportation. And you're right on that part, right? Shell, most of these applications have been in the, on the shell. And then we do not really know. That's why sometimes we do a, a, cell, a, a total shell swabbing uh, to breaking mm -hmm. the eggs and looking into those. So uh, yeah. can you can you talk about, do you, like, how does that log, like, you know, the, the, the numbers of this colony forming that you see even in the probiotics going inside the eggs, how, what, where they lesser inside the uh, egg content compared with the shell or not necessarily? Do you mean the probiotic counts? Right. Yes, yes, they're definitely lesser than on the shell. On the shell, we sprayed eight log. Yep, yep, yep. Right? Yep. And we recovered anywhere from three to four log on the inside. Yeah, oh, that is very good. That's. I mean, you're reducing by at least by three to four logs. I mean, two to three logs, yeah. Yes, and then um, it's interesting because towards the, so we, uh, so we sprayed multiple times, right? We sprayed once before setting the egg. Right. And then we sprayed again on day 10 because we assume day 10 is normally when the eggs are candled. 
there could be some cross contamination and there could be a point for treatment that will match with current industry practices right and then be sprayed again on day 18 before the eggs are transferred from the incubator into the hatcher okay okay and uh, towards the end of incubation we actually sample the developing intestine mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right at the end of the day what's happening how much is actually going into the gut and we so whatever reduction we saw in the contents we also saw a reduction in the intestine. Oh, wow. The developing intestine, right? So that was kind of our hypothesis. So if you, yeah. So if you reduce in the developing initial incubation, then you also reduce in later in the developing embryo. And also I saw, no, totally agreed. And then I also saw, you know, different points that you have those end points or those control points. You are continuously also treating those because that is what happens in a practical situation. Yes. Uh, yeah. That is awesome. So then what you talk about, and I know you earlier in this uh, off year, we talk about one-stop approach. So so that's what you think. So from a hatchery, that's what you, your lab is doing pretty much, right? You know, so, so when we're always supplying something or administering something to a hatching, we're always worried because we don't want it to actually affect the developing embryo and hatching process. Since we have used these same strains with a similar approach on hatching eggs, and we have actually published literature that shows that uh, it improves embryo development and hatchability. Okay, yeah, right. right. And then if you take the same thing and use it against salmonella control, it's also going to help salmonella while improving hatchability or while not compromising the production system. So that's why we call it a one-stop approach. Okay. Well, I wish we could have more time, but due to the time limitation, we may have to do one more episode for you to come into and talk about in our uh, program. So uh, thank you so much. Any interesting research areas that your lab is doing right now you want to share? So at this time, we have transitioned to layers. Yeah. So we're trying to see, of course, salmonella is a concern in layers as well. So we're working at uh, controlling salmonella in layers at this time. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Mary and Amla Raju from University of Connecticut um, for coming today and sharing your expertise on a holistic approach on salmonella control by using probiotics. Um, for your listener, um, thank you for watching the episode and I will see you later in another round. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.